wave from the northern plains to New England is breaking records while the south faces a severe weather threat. Meanwhile, red flag fire warnings have been posted in several western states where a historic drought is threatening a catastrophic fire season. Mola Lenghi reports from Boston. Boston is under a heat emergency. Temperatures rose above 90 degrees for the third consecutive day. In the last couple of days, we've had 18 calls that we've flagged as being uh, you know, directly heat related. But on top of that, we've seen a 31% increase in our call volume for the last uh, 48 hours. Many flock to cooling centers and neighboring parks. Why'd you guys come out here today? It's hot, yeah. <laughs> More than 24 million people from the Northern Plains to New England and parts of Texas are under a heat advisory. Today, at least six states set record highs. It was a similar story in Wisconsin, where libraries are offering an escape. We changed our policy to allow drink in the library so people can bring their water bottle in or um, fill their water bottle. Severe drought conditions across the West have helped fuel two wildfires in Arizona, forcing hundreds to evacuate homes outside of Phoenix. More than 100,000 acres have burned. In neighboring Utah, the dry conditions prompted the governor to call for a weekend of prayer. We need more rain, and we need it now. We need some divine intervention. The heat and humidity also produced scattered severe thunderstorms from Alabama to Texas, where a woman's body was recovered after floodwaters swept her car off the road. More than 100 homes were flooded outside of Houston. Well, back here in Boston, the extreme heat is expected to continue tomorrow with temperatures above 90s for the fourth day straight. Meanwhile, in Minneapolis, about a dozen schools there have announced they're moving to remote learning as the extreme heat is expected to continue there for the rest of the week. Elaine? Mola Lenghi, thank you. For more, let's bring in CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Hi there, Jeff. So let's talk about the heat wave. How bad is it and how much longer will it last? So for this early in the season, this has been a very intense heat wave. Even more so, though, it's a very large heat wave because it covers a large part of the nation, about two-thirds of the country. Now, it's a little complicated because it's trapped the storm system right over here. And so it's a little cooler down in the southeast. In fact, over the weekend, it was around 20 to 25 degrees cooler in New Orleans than it was in Minneapolis, which got to about 100 degrees or so. And the heat is really hugging the Canadian border, as you see. Now, in Mola's piece, he was just talking about the flooding in the south. And the reason is this storm is trapped under the heat dome, so it really can't go anywhere. And so it's been raining for days in the south. We have some rain in Texas today. Uh, but this is going to be alleviated a little bit as it begins to move on. Problem is in the south is that it's rain on top of two months of two to three feet of rain, and so it's causing flash flooding. All right, so the heat is going to continue on Tuesday. Some record highs we're expecting. Minneapolis could hit 96, Aberdeen 96 degrees. And in the east, here's another pocket of heat, Boston right around 97 degrees. Now, it's going to cool down a little bit as we head into Wednesday, but the humidity is going to come up. You can see there's rain across the Ohio Valley. And so injecting this humidity in, even if temperatures only get to 89, let's say, not over the 90 degree mark in places like Philly and Washington, D.C. It's still going to feel oppressive with uh, feels like temperatures around 96 degrees on Wednesday. Well, Jeff, what about the West? A drought is increasing wildfire risk there. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so, you know, you remember last year, of course, that was the worst wildfire season in the history of the West. And this is what the drought looked like last year. So there was drought in certain areas of California, Oregon, into New Mexico and Arizona and Colorado. But look at the difference between last year and this year extraordinary drought across the West, the worst we have ever seen. And so we are setting ourselves up for, unfortunately, probably a catastrophic fire season. You can see how just how dry it is across the West. We have not seen a lot of rain. La Nina, which we had last year, uh, means that we see less rain across the West. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is climate change. Here's something else I want to show you. Now, this is a little convoluted, but uh, I'm going to break it down for you. So this basically shows us the energy available for fire. So if there is a fire, how much energy fuel is available because of how dry it is. Well, the red line is the historic record. January, June, and December right here. 
Notice how the blue line is where we are right now. Way above the record for the date, but not just way above the record for the date, way above the record for all time across California. And we're just at the beginning of fire season, Elaine. That is so stark, and, and so too is that difference in the drought graphics that you just showed year over year. Is climate yeah. change a factor here, Jeff? Yeah, there are a couple of factors. First of all, we've been in a drought now since about the year 2000. In fact, if you look back in history, look at tree rings, scientists have discovered that this is the second worst drought in the last 1,200 years. They're calling it a mega drought. It could be kind of tipping into the worst drought in 1200 years. We'll see what happens over the next uh, couple of years or so, but climate change is, is playing a part. And here's how climate change plays a part. Summer warming. You can see most of the country with the exception of the upper Midwest where there's a lot of irrigation. But over here, around the country and especially in the West, it is warm. Places like Phoenix where there was a fire in Arizona uh, during the day today. They have warmed around four degrees Fahrenheit just in the last 50 years or so. So when you warm the brush, you warm the ground, uh, you evaporate a lot of, you're adding more energy, so you're evaporating a lot of the moisture into the atmosphere and the ground gets drier and drier. Then on top of that, if you have a La Nina, like we had last year, you have about two years or so with very limited rain. Just north of Lake Oroville, which is an important reservoir in California, they've seen three to some pockets, four feet uh, less rain than they're supposed to see just since last October. So in nine months, their rainfall deficit in some pockets there, three feet or more, just to give you an idea of how bad things are in California right now. Just a confluence of things happening there. Jeff Beardelli for us. Jeff, That's thank right. you so much. Tonight, record-breaking heat and a lack of rainfall are threatening to paralyze the country. Tonight, record-breaking heat and a lack of rainfall are threatening to paralyze the country's western half. Tonight, record-breaking heat and a lack of rainfall are threatening to paralyze the country's western half. There's Phoenix, set to blister its records. But the high heat will reach beyond the desert this week. Billings, Montana, forecasting 104 degrees. Casper, Wyoming, 102. Salt Lake City, 103. Grand Junction, 106. As parts of California hit triple digits, the heat could be felt in the kitchen as farmers suffer to produce. If we don't have enough water and we don't have enough feed for these cows, the, the tough decisions are coming for all of us. But there is no rain on the calendar, punishing the already dry, parched land. This year is the worst drought, the worst year since 1977. 88% of it now in a drought, raising fears of widespread wildfires. The flames already burning in Utah, prompting the governor to ask his state to pray for water from the skies. We need it now. We need some divine intervention. The thirst for water evident at Lake Mead, at its lowest point since 1937. And in the Nevada mountains, even bighorn sheep are desperate. We did see some mortalities on the mountain. Um, and they, those mortalities were uh, where they would normally find water, and there wasn't any. Tucson is moving its outdoor COVID vaccination sites indoors as cities brace for earlier, hotter summers. Definitely in the future and decades to come, we'll see probably more intense heat events like this. And there is heightened concern about the American West power supply. Last summer, 800,000 California homes lost electricity. Now the state's power grid operator warns it may be overstressed again, adding blackouts to the list of potential dangers this summer. It's just scorching. How long is this heat wave expected to last, Vaughn? Yeah, Kate, heat advisories are in effect through at least this Saturday here. Usually June's, they're cloudier, they're cooler, but this year, summer's coming early. Kate? Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC. And today's class lesson is going to be on Hollywood knows a famine is coming soon. Again, today's class topic is going to be on Hollywood knows a famine is coming soon. Okay, Israel, uh, many of our people in the world don't know what a famine is. A famine is when you have your land dried up, of course, uh, due to the fact that there's no water supply. There's no, there's not enough rain, and also there's not enough water supply on the land 
uh, for nutrition or health or anything like that as far as drinking water or anything like that to help support your society and Yahweh brings famine on the earth for particular reasons and we have to go into this Bible to get the understanding on why he does these things and uh, also to people on the West Coast if you looked at the video prior before I started this lesson that you've seen people in California or people on the West Coast primarily are suffering from a drought okay and um, all this is all biblical and then also Hollywood knows these things because they put these uh, information in their movies so you have like the movie the book of Eli and when you watch the movie called the book of Eli you had what appeared to be like a uh, drought like situation where you had Denzel Washington uh, walking amongst what appeared to be like a desert like situation okay and then you had barely a uh, big large society because it appeared that people had you know either died out or moved away from primarily the west coast area or wherever landmass uh denzel washington was located in the film but in the film you know about the bible okay it was a fight to protect the bible that um denzel washington had okay so hollywood is telling you that they know a famine is coming soon that's why they put it uh different visuals in their movies and then of course you had like a purge like situation as far as survival mode you know they was trying to find drinking water as well um they tried to keep it a secret as far as where is the drinking water located at in the book of uh, eli movie as far as survival mode okay um but again in general society knows that the bible is the truth okay so we're gonna pull a few precepts from the word okay to match up what i'm saying about a famine okay uh, we're going to start out in the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. It says, uh, and it's also the book of Amos is in the Old Testament, okay, in the King James Version Bible. Uh, this is the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, Elohim, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. So this is... A situation what Yahweh is going to do he's going to bring chaos and destruction to this world because of sin and when you have a chaos situation Yahweh's word is not being brought out because it's survival okay right now you have opportunity now to hear Yahweh's word you have opportunity now to study this Bible okay you have opportunity to see signs okay signs that Yahweh is presenting to us to know that a hey, destruction is coming to america and also to the other countries as well okay israel so hollywood knows the bible is the truth that's why they put like uh the purge like situations in their films and also like a famine like situation in their films to show that they understand these things are going to come to pass and um also too if you look at the the forever purge movie that's about to come out or you look at the trailer uh, in the film, it looks like a desert-like situation or like um, a drought-like situation for survival. Okay, when you look at the film as well. So they put little subliminal uh, messages in these films to make it appear that it's just a movie. But when you have your spiritual eyes open, you're aware, okay, they put everything in a desert-like situation because they understand a famine is going to come. Okay, they understand these things. Um, let's go to the next one. It says Psalms chapter 107, verse 33. This is the book of Psalms chapter 107, verse 33, to get an understanding on who's causing these things to occur when we see like a famine or a drought. It says, He turneth rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground. Who's the He? That's Yahweh. That's the black God, okay, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the one that turneth rivers into wilderness. He's the one that's uh, turning the water springs into dry ground okay Yahweh is the one doing this and then you look at primarily on the west coast of the United States that's morely, mostly where all the evil is occurring where you got Hollywood passing all this stuff around as far as falsified information or glamorizing a lifestyle that's not presentable and and not righteous okay and also you got um, other things going on in like uh, Las Vegas 
you know, which they call Sin City, right? And also, too, in California, you have a lot of murders, a lot of gang activity, a lot of drug dealing going on in those particular areas as well. Uh, so, again, when you have a situation where sin is at its magnitude, expect these curses going to come out as far as famine, pestilences, you know, diseases and stuff like that coming down the road. And also, we already seen what Yahweh brought uh, mainly last year, which was the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, and now we got other things coming on top of that where you have um like like a famine okay uh let's go to the next verse it says psalms chapter 107 verse 34 it says a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein see it says for the wickedness of them that dwell therein so the most high can turn a fruitful land into a drought like situation where you don't have no produce you don't have anything that can uh you know make the land be fruitful or be, to be prosperous to help you know help people survive but notice the key point it says for wickedness of them that dwell therein so the most high brings these things like a famine or a drought because of wickedness because of evil deeds of things that particular society is doing okay in these particular areas primarily primarily on the west coast and also, we're going to see things occur in the south and also up north as well. Okay, but in general, primarily the west coast, because, you know, the west coast is primarily hot in, in general. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. It says Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 26, verse 18. It says, and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So Yahweh said, if you don't listen to me, listen to my word, my law, statutes, statutes and commandments, I'm going to punish you even more for your sins. Okay? Seven times more. Um, he says, uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 19, he said, And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass. So Yahweh is going to bring destruction. Okay? Um, let's keep on going. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 20. And it says, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. So again, because of sin, the most I say, all your work and labor, all the things that you did once in your life to make sure your land was prosperous, he's not going to make it be fruitful anymore. He's going to remove the source that made your land fruitful. That's going to your land where you have your crops, fruits, vegetables, and stuff like that. He's, he's going to yield it from being prosperous okay and this is the judgment of yahweh when um when we don't obey his word see it says leviticus chapter 26 verse 21 and if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me i will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins according to your sins so this is how yahweh does things he brings plagues according to our sins so this is why children of israel have to keep these commandments our people that's on the west coast they're going to be facing trials and tribulations okay at an alarm rate because of their sins okay and most of these people are going to get a wake-up call down the road and you're going to see people on the news you're going to see them mostly trying to get out of the west coast because like i said that place is going to be hit real hard with 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 a famine okay the west coast on this map of the united states of america is going to be hit with a serious plague with the famine this is why we're seeing uh the famine getting to a situation where it is now this is the beginning stages of of the basically the inevitable okay all because of sin okay um let's go to luke chapter 21 verse 11 this is christ speaking okay this is his words this is the black messiah speaking this is luke chapter 21 verse 11 it says and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines uh oh <laughs> you see this israel and famines that's plural that's not just one famine in one location that's going to be in different locations throughout the world in general but we're talking about right now presently in the united states of america okay uh it said and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven 
So again, it's going to be fearful sights because you're going to see fear on our people's faces and in general the so-called white man because right now he's on panic mode. But at the end of the day, the so-called white man has underground bunkers to protect himself. He has food, storage, supplies to protect himself underground. But our people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're not prepping for the future. We're just living for today. So in general, we have to come to the understanding that, hey, we got to keep these laws. We got to learn how to build with one another. We have to know how to supply and, and get ourselves to be able to stock goods and supplies. But people primarily on the West Coast, which is our people, they're going to be messed up because they're not prepping. Okay? This is why you have to prep Israel because the signs of the times are here. Uh, and the news media are, is basically telling you people it's not looking good for the future for the people that's on the West Coast. To be able to survive for another 20, 30 years is not looking good for them. Um, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 13. It says, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you hear what the Most High said? When the when people sin against the Most High, right? By trespassing, not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, the Most High say, guess what? I'm going to break the staff off the bread thereof. I mean, I'm going to cut off your food supply. I'm going to cut off things that you need to survive. That's what he said. And we'll send famine upon it and we'll cut off man and beast from it. So that means your animals that you use to eat, right, or to use in general, he's going to cut them off. And also man from it, meaning you're going to die out from thirst or you're going to die out from hunger. These, these are things that happen when you sin against the Most High. Okay, and, and basically the Most High is talking to the children of Israel. This is, these are things leading up to Jacob's trouble when this famine particularly hits. It's, and, and of course, our people are not paying attention to these signs primarily on the west coast but our people in general they need to be paying attention to these signs they need to get their mind right they need to get their money supply straight they need to do these things for survival because it's about to get rough down here okay it's about to get rough in america okay uh yahweh is not playing uh let's go to the next one it says ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 29 this is ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 29 and uh, also the Ecclesiasticus is in the Apocrypha, okay, in the original King James Version. Uh, it's the 14 missing books I, that was taken out of the original King James Version, in case my new viewers don't understand where uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus is located at, okay? But uh, this is in the Bible, okay? Um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 39 verse 29 says, Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. So Yahweh is saying what? He created fire. He created hell. And he created famine, which is the subject matter. Famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. So this is how Yahweh pays you back. With your sins you've been committing, right, on this earth. You thought you got away with it. He's going to bring this destruction unto you. So you may have to say, hey, why this guy died like that? Or why he was taken out that like that? Because of sin. That's what Yahweh created these things for. For vengeance. Okay? For vengeance. Uh, so this is why we have to take these signs seriously, Israel. Because if you look on Kingdom Builders of Israel, see YouTube page. I had brought this out about famine is coming to the world a year ago. If you see, it says famine is coming to the world. It was about like a, a year ago I had posted it. And people barely even looked at that. But now, now you see it full circle now now they're talking about it in the news media now at an alarming rate on the west coast but again in general our people the black Hispanics, native americans they're still asleep they're not paying attention to this <laughs> you know they worrying about celebrities and and who's dating who worry about having their best life but they're not prepping for the future okay so israel Pay attention to these movies that's coming out, okay? You have the Forever Purge movie coming out soon. 
uh, that talks about like a purge like situation also something like a famine situation occurring as well and then you had movies like the book of eli that came out years ago talking about a purge like situation because you look at the movie you had denzel washington fighting to survive beating up people and stuff like that for survival okay and, then, and also you seen women that were single in the movie it was hard for them to, to survive on their own you see this israel so this is why you hebrew women have to get you a hebrew man because times is going to get rough for you in general because you're trying to be independent okay can't be independent uh in america in these last days you have to try to your best to get with a hebrew man that's in the truth so he can lead your household in the right direction for survival okay israel uh, hopefully uh this class lesson was edifying for you that hollywood knows a famine is coming soon so people on the west coast be paying attention what's about to be going on because like i said you're not going to be able to survive like that too much longer without water there's just no way <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's, it's going to be madness out there so you're going to be seeing a lot of people moving from the west coast trying to come back to the south uh or up north somewhere because like i said that west coast area mm -mm -mm. most i got a serious famine coming that way uh because of sin okay other than that israel stay tuned for uh, more videos from kingdom builders of israel LC youtube page and uh and man 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 just uh look at these videos israel take this as a warning sign okay it's time to get your act together and stop playing games come back to the most high y'all come back to these law statutes and commandments in these hard trying times israel uh so stay tuned for these other videos displaying the seriousness of a famine that's coming to the west coast of the uh, u.s of course uh, the west coast like california las vegas and stuff like that and also utah area as well but stay tuned for more videos because it's going to get very uh descriptive okay on the seriousness of this matter okay it's a it's, it's a basically like an emergency situation um but other than that israel pay attention to hollywood hollywood is definitely putting information out there like that that matching up with the bible okay to a certain degree because they know the bible is the truth um other than that israel watch these videos shalom dry conditions up and down the west coast tonight and the fears that an already bad drought could get even worse once the summer heat truly takes hold. The drought's impact clear in places like Folsom Lake, California, critical to the state's water supply. Officials tonight sounding the alarm about the effects of climate change and the new normal that might come with it. Our Zareen Shah reports from the critically low reservoir. Folsom Lake is one of California's largest reservoirs, crucial to providing water to the state's 40 plus million residents. But it's dramatically shrunken this year, docking dozens of boats on dry land. We recognize that we're in a race against time um, to protect our communities and our natural places from the impacts of climate change. People can normally launch boats off of this ramp, especially during this time of year. But as you can see from our drone, those levels are so low, it takes at least a quarter of a mile to get to that water. Relentless heat and dry conditions evaporating the already below average snowpack in the nearby Sierra Nevada mountains that supplies the reservoir. If this was a normal time and this lake was full, how far underwater would we be right now? So right now we'd be about 70 feet underwater. The normal, Richard uh, Preston LeMay has been overseeing Folsom Lake for over 15 years. What exactly is this water right here used for? So the water that we're on right now is used for a variety of things from uh, drinking water for some of the local municipalities. Um, it's also used downstream on the American River uh, for the fisheries habitat and, and then for other um, water consumers downstream for farming agricultural purposes. The superintendent of Folsom Lake Park says the already parched drought conditions are a major concern ahead of what's likely to be a bone dry summer. Unless something changes, this is going to be one of the most dire summers that you've ever seen here. It is, yes, for sure. 100 percent of the state of California suffering a worsening drought, posing a threat to farmers. The state's hydroelectric power plants, which could mean rolling blackouts throughout the state and wildfire danger that could displace numerous communities. Climate change worsens the extremes that lead to drought, 
including by making average temperatures hotter and heat waves last longer. Climate change impacts have become a matter of protecting communities in California, worsening wildfire risk, uh, worsening drought, extreme heat. We used to think about preparing for climate change impacts as sort of a future planning exercise uh, for coming decades. Now we're actually responding to it as a public safety imperative. California's Natural Resource Secretary seeing the effects of climate change year after year, publicly confronting former President Donald Trump in the midst of the state's historic 2020 fire season. If we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay, it'll start getting cooler. I you wish just, you just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> hey, well, I don't think science knows actually. Now he's focused on solutions. We do have to take action. We cannot stick our head in the sand. We have to be driven by science and facts and actually make the investments and make the decisions that we need to, both to reduce carbon pollution and combat climate change and protect our communities in the meantime. Wade Crowfoot says the state is currently in its second drought season and drastic measures could be ahead if it continues. Of 2015, I remember you know, um, guidance from the state to first to take certain actions at home. Yeah. To limit water, to not flush us off, to take yep. shorter showers. Are we headed in that direction right now? We don't know um, how long this drought will last. And if this drought, for example, lasts into a, a, a third dry winter, um, those types of restrictions would certainly be uh, possible if not expected. Just this week, one of the state's largest counties, Santa Clara, announced it will restrict water use, even opening the door to fine people if they waste water. And California's wine industry suffering from the continued water shortages, forcing wineries to adapt. We're planning on coping with uh, the climate change and the reduction of rain. We don't see that it will necessarily be improving and we want to be prepared. At Acquiesce Winery, the all-female farms owner Susan Tipton says her harvest took a 25% hit last season. It's a worry. I wonder if my granddaughter will be able to walk through this vineyard one day and uh, make wine from it. So concerned, she says she recently donated part of her 18 acres to UC Davis to study which grapes farmers should be planting to best thrive in these changing conditions. Water is a finite thing. And to preserve the art of making wine, she and many local farmers placing a tax on themselves, partly from monthly meetings with climate scientists. What is it like emotionally? This is something you've poured your heart into. You started this, this winery. I think that, you know, it's disturbing for sure. Um, worrisome for sure. But I think you have to put a spin on it to think long term and what you can do. Holding on to hope as the world continues getting warmer. Despite everything that happened, you're hopeful. Oh, certainly. Yes, you have to be. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Folsom Lake. In Climate Watch, the drought that has hit the western United States for years is getting worse. Last week, the federal government declared what's called an exceptional drought for much of the region. That's the most severe classification. In Utah, the conditions are helping fuel several wildfires early in the season. The governor there says that the state is experiencing its worst drought in decades. At the Hoover Dam, the water level tells the story. It's down to its lowest level since the dam was built. The iconic structure provides power for nearly 8 million people in Arizona, Southern California, and Nevada. CBS News' Ben Tracy has more on the government's plans to address the problem. Man, it's amazing to see it up close. For more than eight decades, the Hoover Dam has relied on water from Nevada's Lake Mead to cover up its backside. But now at age 85, it finds itself uncomfortably exposed. This is like a different world. Pat Mulroy is the former head of the Southern Nevada Water Authority. She says Lake Mead, the nation's largest reservoir, is on track to soon hit its lowest level ever recorded. This part of the Colorado River system is a crucial water supply for Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Southern California. It makes the vast agricultural land of the desert southwest possible. This landscape screams problems to me. I mean, just look at the bathtub rings. To me, that is an enormous wake-up call. 
Are you a Georgia Power customer? Earn rebates by making your home more energy efficient. Start saving today. Lake Mead is at just 37% of its capacity. It hasn't been full since back in 2000 when the water came right up to the top of Hoover Dam. This is what it looks like now. Since 2000, Lake Mead has dropped 130 feet. That's hard to imagine, but picture a 13-story building on top of my head, and way up there, that's where the water used to be. We're at a tipping point. It's an existential issue for Arizona, for California, for Nevada. It is just that simple. For the first time ever, the federal government is expected to declare a water shortage on the lower Colorado River later this summer. That will force automatic cuts to the water supply for Nevada and Arizona starting in 2022. If we don't have irrigation water, we can't farm. Dan Thielander is a second generation family farmer in Arizona's Pinal County. The water to grow his corn and alfalfa fields comes from Lake Mead. So next year, we're going to get about 25% less water. It means we're going to have to fallow or not plant 25% of our land. This is an engineering marvel for sure. Back at Hoover Dam, facility manager Mark Cook has his own concerns. Lake Mead has dropped so much that it's cut the dam's hydropower output by nearly 25%. He wanted to show us the new turbine blades they just installed. So right below us right here is that, is that brand new turbine. Designed to keep the power flowing efficiently at rapidly dropping lake levels. Our previous number was at elevation 1050, and now we've lowered that number to 950, so we, uh, so we bought ourselves 100 feet. All those islands were underwater? Completely submerged. Pat Mulroy says a rapidly retreating reservoir may be the new normal, and the millions of people who rely on this water supply will have to quickly learn to live with less of it. We don't change unless we absolutely have to. Well, when you look out at this lake, I think that moment of it's absolutely necessary has arrived. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Lake Mead, Nevada. For more, I wanna bring in Henry Fountain. He's a climate reporter at the New York Times. Henry, give us some historical context here. We saw Ben explain that a 13-story building uh, should be on top of his head full of water. Um, but how severe is this drought, not just there, but, but throughout the Western United States? It's, it's really severe. Uh, California uh, to where I am in New Mexico, up north, even as far as North Dakota, uh, it's really, really bad drought. The problem is it's been dry. Uh, pretty much for like the last year and a half. And actually it's been dry in much of the much of the region for the last 20 years with sort of some intermittent years that were kind of wet, but we're really in a prolonged drought. And the thing about drought is the longer it goes, the worse it gets. Things